boy Paganini. This piece is completely and unashamedly happy and energetic. It practically jumps for joy. So we need to give it vitality right from the first note. Practice that note a few times to get it just right. Then add a couple of notes. And add a couple more. Right from the beginning, we need the sense that the music is going somewhere. In this case, the music is sweeping up to the end of the phrase. So don't start too loud. We need to leave room to make a crescendo at the end of the phrase. And to make a crescendo on the last note. And then the second phrase does the same thing. Then we can back off a bit for the next phrase. And backing off a little more for the next phrase. Now, we give this phrase ending a little shape, a little hairpin, crescendo and diminuendo. Not too much, but enough to be noticeable. So, in order to do justice to this music, we are doing a lot more than what's written on the page in terms of dynamics and tone and shaping of the phrases. And that is the name of the game, to bring the music to life using all the tools at our disposal. Now, the style changes. It becomes more accented. We might call this an accented detache. There's no space between the notes. It's done with the arm, pressure and release. This is a great bow stroke. You'll have many opportunities to use it. Going on. Make sure you arrive cleanly at the harmonic. And then that you arrive cleanly on the next note. Your hand needs to be squarely in fifth position so that the fourth finger can drop directly onto that high F sharp without stretching. Now we're maintaining the accented style whenever we find separate quarter notes. Whenever we have the dotted eighth and sixteenth note figure, we need to articulate it cleanly with the fingers of the left hand. The sixteenth note needs to be fast and clear and precise. Feel the sixteenth note subdivisions. Don't let the sixteenth note become lazy. Don't let it turn into a triplet rhythm like this. That is very lazy. Here's the right way again. Now, let's jump ahead to the theme on the next page. I like to start this section down bow. That allows me to lift off the F sharp elegantly with an up bow. And then to continue with the same elegant up bows. opportunities to shape the small phrases. And here are more 
small phrases. Now, moving on to the variation. Now it gets interesting. The most important thing is for the pizzicato notes and the bowed notes to match up and to have quality. So, first of all, find a clean resonant sound for those first pizzicatos. The third finger does the pizzicato, moving sideways like this. Now, let's find a bow sound that matches that. It's a rather soft spiccato. Keep the bow close to the string. Now, let's put it together. Do those arpeggio figures with not too much bow. The volume needs to be consistent with what came before. Now, jumping ahead, as soon as we come back to normal bowing, re-establish your beautiful singing tone and the beautiful shaping of the phrases. It gets more passionate over here. Moving on to the last section. Find a nice lively tempo. It's pretty straightforward. More and more and more. the 16th note passage, use just a tiny bit of bow and keep the bow firmly pressed into the string. This bow stroke is called the sautier. The stick of the bow is springing, but the hair does not leave the string. Don't let it do this. Here's the right way again. Now, jumping ahead to the ending, you can use big, broad bow strokes for a glorious ending. <laughs>